God, there's something that's very just just soaring about a character like her. It's nice. Those kinds of people, too, what I realized is they see everything. If they're in a situation of danger or adrenaline high, they're able to read a situation in a second. You know, for me, I just kind of get stunned, right? But a character like Emily, there's a calm to her when she's faced with a, an extreme situation or she's in a moment of danger. I really admire that, you know? I think some of her strength ultimately just comes from love. I think when she was little, she was given love by Warren. And having that love planted a seed of safety and it let her spread that love to other people in her life. It's my guess, is that when a child receives that kind of love, then they're able to stay strong in the face of anything, you know? No, I would be a terrible FBI agent. I would be like such a space cadet, yeah. No, FBI agents are so quick, so clear, and so thorough. And I'm like, do we have to do paperwork today? Come on, let's just go play, guys. Yeah, no, I would be a terrible FBI agent. I feel like other actors on our show would be much better. <laughs> They're kind of a part of this fringe world that doesn't necessarily live in any sort of morality. There's no black and white to these characters. You will love Jeff. You'll love Jeff but he's a very naughty man in our show. <laughs> and that's part of, you know, the charm of that world. And the same thing with Josette's character. Um, we will be afraid of Rowena, and yet there's something that will be very magnetic about it that will draw audiences in. And I'm curious to see how audiences interpret it all. Fierce. I just fierce. Unfettered. Oof, that's better. Unfettered. Look that one up, guys. Okay. <laughs> There's something really sweet about having these two filmmaker directors who uh, grew up in Europe and grew up on different sort of parts of Europe. So they have, they bring a different set of experiences because of that. Kasia comes from the world of, I mean, her entire family uh, are all filmmakers and she comes from the world of graphic art novels. She's been such a boon for us as storytellers. She's added value all the time. And her partnership with Ziv, her, uh, her DP, is kind of beautiful. They're like an old married couple on set. And then we have Greg now, who's working alongside Rotem, who was our DP from last year, from the second half. And Rotem is extraordinary. He's the one who kind of, he's the one who kind of amped up what Absentia could and was going to look like for this new chapter in our world. And everybody, all of these four people have a level of like rock and roll, you know, in them. And I think we need that for a show like Absentia. We need people who are fearless as storytellers. I've really gone on, but you have to be able to use some of that stuff. And it needs to be said, because they're beautiful. I'm really grateful for our, our DPs and our, our directors this season. Awakened, um, empowered, ferocious. It's very helpful because we have a developed history as a bunch of characters, but also the developed history as actors, and we understand each other's sorts of uh, routines and what the other actor needs in order to create the best that he or she can. All of these actors are coming and giving it their very best, and they're invested in a level that I think we should always be invested in a project, but it's not its not common, right? And because of that, and because of the history that we have with each other, there's a, a speed to which we create together because now we have a shorthand and we understand, okay, this is, this is what we're paying off in this scene. This is how we can fill in the blanks. Um, this, these are the adjustments, these are parameters. This is what we're looking to uh, adjust or elevate in, in each moment. And, that's something that's a really nice thing to have in a working environment. The hardest scene so far to shoot was the um, 
fight sequence in the first episode, at the very end of the first episode. And the reason that it was challenging was because we had to shoot it in a form of like a one take, you know? So all of the fight needed to be really specific and well done and well placed. And then on top of that, you're dancing with the camera, a Ziv. Uh, who is our DP uh, for the first block, um, had to, you know, he, he, he's moving from a really high viewpoint to a very low viewpoint to finding, you know, a gun and then focusing on to Emily. And so it was like a dance between, between 12 people. And we're actually fighting at that point. So, you know, bruises are being made and we have to time it out perfectly. Um, so that was challenging. My esophageal tract was constricted for an entire couple of hours until they were like cut and I was like <laughs> <laughs> So would I be up for an absentia movie? I think that in so many ways our show is shot like an independent film. And so it feels like we're shooting a film already. Sometimes it feels like we're shooting three films in one season. But anyway. Um, and I think it would be a very natural progression for us. And if we could find the right sort of next step for all of these characters, uh, it would be a hoot. We'd have a good time. Because we have a good time shooting it, yeah. I think a dream ending for me for this character is that she is completely in her body. She is fully empowered and fierce and She's an advocate for the value of human life because her life has been compromised so much along the way. She just doesn't care. She's unfettered. She's, she's waving her freak flag high and she's okay with it. Yeah, something like that.